So as a woman, I'm sure you have dealt with or you have come to the realization that there's a lot of, let's say, broken men out there, men who lack healing, men who have unresolved issues. And this lack of healing shows up in ways of that man being very insecure. All right. And let's face it, having to be with an insecure man as a woman is not fun. It's, it's, not, it's not a great thing to have to experience because it can lead to a lot of problems. Now, mind you, when I say insecure man, that doesn't automatically mean bad man. That doesn't mean a man who's out to do you wrong in any kind of way. It just really speaks to a man who lacks confidence or doesn't really know himself, doesn't, doesn't have that, that sense of, of who he is truly at the core. And therefore, that insecurity can now create other issues in the relationship. And as a woman, you have to be mindful of how to pick up on that. Because let's face it, sometimes you're not going to see it right away. It, sometimes that insecurity is being hidden behind this fake confidence, so to speak, this fake tough guy act. So you don't really catch it. You don't really understand what's going on. And by the time you do, it's a huge mess. All right. Because again, it can come out in so many unhealthy ways that create so many more problems. So I want to lay out for you some very common phrases, well, toxic phrases that these insecure men use to help you kind of identify when you're dealing with one. And again, I want to repeat it, this. These phrases are not simply being uttered by men who want to manipulate you, hurt you or anything like that. Sometimes they're just being uttered by men who are good guys, but due to their unresolved issues, mishandle situations, okay, and create bigger problems. And, and sometimes we don't even understand the magnitude of how this insecurity is going to impact the relationship as we move forward. So one of the very common toxic phrases that these men use is the whole no one will love you like I do, okay? Now, let's look at that from two angles. Let's start with the bad guy angle, right? So you, you may have seen it in a movie. You may have experienced it firsthand. You may have known a friend or family member going through it, where there are men who will put that in a woman's head in order to make you feel insecure, in order to scare you into thinking you have no better options, so you better just deal with me. You need to stay here. You should not leave me. Now, the crazy thing, if you want to call it crazy, is that even when it's the man doing this out of uh, the intent to manipulate, control, things of this nature, he does, even though he's not treating you right, he will still proclaim that you cannot do better than this. He will still complain that no one will love you like this because many times those, those ma manipulative, toxic men will even try to position some of their bad behaviors as this is still love. It's almost like this comes to mind. And again, this is an example that some of these men will use. You have men who have been physically abusive to women and claim that they're hit. I hit you because I love you. Like that's how sick it is. Okay. So you've got to be mindful that when a man utters that phrase, now, in all these examples, when we're trying to decipher between the controlling, manipulative, hurtful man versus the good man who just is mishandling the situation or saying things he shouldn't say, it's about looking at the overall relationship, okay? If this man in general treats you poorly, does other toxic things, then we can pretty much be rest assured that this statement is coming from a toxic place, okay? And you got to always remember, listen, I don't care what someone tells you and what some of you may even come to your own conclusion on, because there are many women, unfortunately, this is really hitting my spirit right now. There's some women who have convinced themselves that they won't do any better, have convinced themselves that no man will love them more than this. For some women, you have seen your mothers be treated so poorly that even though this man right now does not treat you well, because he treats you better than your, your father treated your mother or your stepfather treated your mother, 
you rationalize this as, well, I, I should be grateful. I, this is as good as it gets, so to speak. And I want to tell you, no, it, it can be better. You deserve better. You should in no way rationalize or accept poor behavior, unhealthy relationships, and a man who is not willing to do right by you. All right. So if he meant he he makes that statement, that has to send up the red flag right away. All right. And you got to understand that you got to hear the word manipulation go off in your head over and over. Like this man is playing a game right now. Do not fall for it. But now let's look at it from the other angle. The other angle is a good man. And I've, I've known, I've seen this happen. Say the same thing. No one will ever love you like I do. Now it's still coming from an insecure place, but the difference with this guy is he really believes that he loves you like immensely. So he can't even fathom someone else loving you more than him. He's not saying this to, to manipulate you, but it is coming from an insecure place because he may be saying it hoping that you won't leave him. Like typically when a man, even a good man says something like that, it's chances are it's in a moment of there's a potential for you to walk away. All right. Something's going wrong. Maybe there's an argument, something of that nature. Or, or even just maybe there's not an argument. Maybe he just senses like things are getting a little disconnected. Right. And so he's kind of saying that it kind of be like, hey, you know, like this, this is as good as it gets. Like, I, I love you too much for you to think there's someone else that will beat this. Right. And again, though it's from an unhealthy, though it's unhealthy for him to say that in a sense, and no one can ever proclaim that someone will ever not love you more than me. Number one, God will always love you more than any of us, number one. But number two, we don't know who else is out there who can and cannot love you. And, and, and relationships aren't about trying to evaluate who will love me more. It's about, okay, are you even in the right place? Are you dealing with the right person? Are we showing up the way that we need to show up for each other, man and woman? Okay. If we are, then, that, then that's all that really matters. Okay. If, if we're not, that's the problem. But I just want to make clear that yes, even that guy out of his own insecurity, because he feels like I have to, I have to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Why did I lose my words? I have to push this idea in your head or reinforce this thought because I am hoping to, to strengthen my, my attachment to you or your attachment to me, right? Maybe because I fear that I can't rely on my love itself to do that because the unfortunate reality is that many people, and yes, men too, have poured their heart out to a woman and still been walked away from. All right, still been left hurt, still been left disappointed. So many people don't have the confidence in love itself to rely on that to drive and keep things together. And now they start to invite things like this where they have to say stuff, hoping that that will kind of keep you in place, so to speak. But it is still speaking from a place of insecurity rather than him being able to rest assured that, number one, it's not just about him having faith in love, but him having faith in God. If this is where he, if God wants him to be, then it will be if, as long as he's doing his part. And that's what he should be focused on. But, you know, it happens. All right. So we're going to keep this going. Another toxic phrase. And, and, you know, again, I use the word toxic. Maybe you might view it differently, but another unhealthy, toxic, however you want to call it, whatever you want to call it, phrase that insecure men will use is, I'm sorry. Now, let me, let me clarify, because saying I'm sorry is a good thing when you actually have done something wrong. The problem here is the insecure man says it even when it's not necessary. It's the guy who's constantly apologizing, I'm sorry, either because he, he lacks confidence in himself to stand his ground on whatever it is, so he's constantly trying to accommodate you and appease you and make you feel good by saying, I'm sorry, or let's dive into the toxic guy for a second. He's just using I'm sorry to shut you up, all right? He, he's trying not to even have to address this and deal with this. And that may not always speak to a quote-unquote insecurity in him, so to, so to speak, 
but it still can be a very manipulative tactic. Now, the key behind if it's manipulation or genuine is what's the sorry followed up with? Like, I'm sorry doesn't mean anything without the proper follow-up. So they, they say the best apology is change behavior. So if nothing changes, what you like the, 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 you're clearly just using these words to keep me happy or to, to push things along. But if you're unwilling to make the necessary corrections or what I even like to do is if someone says, I'm sorry, why are you sorry? Like, like explain to me why you're apologizing. Let me see if you actually understand the issue. Because many people just say, I'm sorry, without having a clear understanding of the issue. Sometimes from a manipulative standpoint, and sometimes they just genuinely don't know and they're just trying to, again, make things better. But diving deeper into the I'm sorry to see if this is real or not. Now, going back to the nice guy, the good guy who is just very insecure and he's constantly saying, I'm sorry. Now, this type of guy, one, pay attention if he's like this with other people as well. Because if he's very, if he's constantly apologizing to other people, even when you notice he's not in the, truly in the wrong, that really shines a bigger light on there being a very deep insecurity within him, all right? And you want to discuss this. Because I'm in no way saying that just because a man is insecure, drop him right away. I, I, I'm a firm believer in you see red flags, you address red flags, we see if we can correct them. Some men may not even understand how they're being insecure in certain moments. And you talking to them could actually help them. All right. And I'm going to put myself out there on Front Street right now. So I remember um, this, it's always many years ago. You know, I, I ain't got no recent stories, but a long time ago, I had a situation. And long story short, um, I was expressing to myself to a woman, and I guess I was downplaying myself a lot. Right. And though I am, I try to have a very humble mindset. I didn't realize how maybe it was coming across. And she pointed out to me, she was like, you know, I get this feeling you might be a little insecure. And I was like, really? Like, I'm not insecure. I'm a confident dude. And then she explained to me what I was doing. And I was like, hmm. Now, I'm someone that is, if you bring something to my attention, I'm going to do some self-reflection, right? And for me, and I hope if there is a man watching this or, or any woman watching this, because this might apply to you as well. Right, and let me just say in advance, I love my family, I love my mama. All right, <laughs> but let me continue. I started to think back, and I remember I was like, okay, I do sometimes have this mindset of nothing's ever good enough, like what I do is not good enough. I'm like, okay, where did that come from? Where could that have started? And I remember as a child, um, I would get all these, I remember like in elementary school getting all these awards or whatever. And for like academics and things of that nature, and felt like my parents and my family act like it was nothing, right? They just paid it no attention. It was like whatever, and it made me feel like, well, dang, it's never good enough. And I did not realize I carried that with me, uh, you know, into adulthood. And it took someone pointing that out for me to be like, oh, wait a minute, okay. And and for all I know, who knows? In what other instances it poured out and I didn't catch it or and that person who I was dealing with, uh, whether a friend or someone I'm dating, didn't point it out to me until this individual did. All right. And so that allowed me to do some inner work and correct that issue once I understood what was going on. But that's an example of someone who no ill intent, no may not even be aware, right, of how they're coming across insecure. But if they're willing to do the work, many times you can find that thing. And, and a lot of, for a lot of people, it starts in the childhood that has now lingered this whole time and has impacted the way that you view yourself and the way that you show up in life. Okay, But all that to say, um, so th though that wasn't an example of saying I'm sorry all the time, it was an example of insecurity. But going back to the constantly saying I'm sorry, again, like... Some some people are just so scared to offend, 
So even when, and it's, it's there's nothing, because even I, if you watch my videos, you know I'm always trying to be careful, right? You see how I had to give disclaimers with my family, everything like that, because I don't want to offend or hurt anybody. But when you're doing it to the point where you even undermine your truth, you undermine your stance, things of that nature, there's a problem there. And, and we got to go deeper into what that is and why that is happening. All right, so this next one. Might piss some people off, <laughs> but you know. But hear me out. Of course, I'm going to explain it. So another phrase, toxic phrase that a lot of highly insecure men use is, "What do you bring to the table?" <laughs> now, I probably should have made this number one. I probably should have let off with this one because I'm sure y'all gonna get a kick out of this. But hear me out. I understand the premise behind. Asking someone or, or trying to see how they respond to the idea of what do you bring to the table, okay? I get the premise of it. However, again, let's look at this from two angles. Angle number one, the, the truly unhealthy manipulative man. A lot of men, not every man, a lot of men use that phrase in a way to kind of attack and undermine that woman's value. Like they're using it to set up the argument. They're using it to set up a, 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 a non positive exchange. They're not coming into that thing, okay, this is gonna go smoothly with me asking a lot of times. Again, not all men, but there are men who do that because they expect for the woman to give a certain kind of answer and they already got their rebuttals ready and loaded, right, to go after her. And, and a lot of times they're doing so because they want to knock her down a few notches, right? And so this sets up that opportunity. And, and the thing is, men who want to manipulate and control, one of the things that some of them will do is they want to lower your self-esteem. By lowering your self-esteem, by, by some might call destroying your ego, so to speak, it makes it easier for them to get what they want from you. It makes it easier for them to control. It makes it easier for them to manipulate. So it can be a tactic in that way. Now, on the other side, there are genuinely good guys who may ask that question. I'm still not the greatest fan of that question because I look at it from the angle of, one, if you are a man who has grown and who has set himself up properly. I think in most cases, you don't have to ask the question like that. You simply can have a conversation with a woman and you can observe and you can see what's going on. Again, but that doesn't mean that sometimes some guys may want to just, they want to make it plain and clear. All right, tell me what value that I can basically experience with you. Okay. And I do think as a woman, though it can be used in a very negative way, in a way to undermine an attack, I don't want you to get defensive when uh, that question is asked. I want you to keep your poise and just answer honestly. Answer what, what you feel that value is. And, and hopefully that value has a lot to do with your character, right? Who you are as a woman more than anything, at least to start off. When you answer that question, you can get into the other stuff, achievements or whatever, but you want to start with who you are as a person. But yeah, I just, in general, I feel like this whole, what do you bring to the table stuff? It, it really overlooks, I believe some of the deeper values that men and women bring to each other that sometimes people don't know how to articulate. Okay. Like I am someone who believes there is uh, spiritual, biological, energetic, so to speak, value by having a woman and man together who truly love each other. Like, uh, just to give one small example, there's a study that shows that if a man speaks to a woman he's attracted to for at least seven minutes, I believe I'm, I'm quoting this correctly, that it can boost his testosterone 14%. So, on a deeper level, people don't realize that just being in the presence of a woman that you are attracted to and that you have love for and all these things can help boost your health because testosterone is important to men. But the average person doesn't know that's happening. <laughs> I didn't know about that till a couple years ago when I was doing some research. 
And I think, and there's so much more to understand and explore. But I believe that a lot of people don't get that, and they're looking at this question from a very surface level. And yes, there are some surface things that need to be addressed, absolutely. But there's so much more than that. You know what I'm saying? So much more, and and how that affects us on our daily lives, and and in pursuing the things that we want to pursue, and for those who want to have a family, how how that's going to impact raising a family and all these things. There's just so much there to consider. But bottom line is, I do feel like. In a lot of cases, the question is being asked, the question of what do you bring to the table, is being asked by men who have not even set their table. That's not to bash men. That's not to downplay them. Because again, I'm not saying this is all men. But I do notice that a lot. I do notice that in many of those guys. And that's why I view it or put it on this list as something that highly insecure men are will, will say, okay? But again, th- there's so much more to it. And, and I'm, I, this is another one of those. I might need to do a whole separate video on this topic by itself. All right. So now before we get to the next one, quickly want to mention, here's your opportunity to join my little special messaging program. I call it the messaging program because by joining this club, you're going to receive little inspirational messages, text, videos to pour love, pour positivity into your life. And it's just a great thing to have that kind of helps you, helps keep you in a positive mindset, all right? And what's also great about this is if you join the program, a part of the proceeds will go to my nonprofit foundation, Healing, Healing Generations Foundation, I'm sorry, all right, where we're looking to basically provide coaching and counseling to more people uh, who maybe can't afford those services. And a host of other programs. So click the link below, or click the link in the comment section, or go to messagesbystefan.com. Now, another one on the list, another toxic phrase highly insecure men will use is, you made me do it. All right? So the old not taking accountability act. <laughs> All right? And let me break it down like this. For a man to take accountability, there takes a level of security within himself, all right? Someone who can look at themselves in the mirror and they can handle criticism and being honest with themselves about where they fall short because they still believe in who they are. They still have a confidence and understand that they can overcome and correct this thing. They are not defeated by these mistakes or these realizations, right? But when you are very insecure, it becomes very difficult to have to take criticism of any sort, even constructive criticism. It becomes difficult to have to take accountability, right? You will always look to deflect. And it's important that you start to pay attention with that man because he may not utter the phrase, you specifically made me do it. But does he constantly deflect in that way with people in general, all right? When it's at work, when it's his friends, whatever it is, is he always making it about the other person and it's never him, right? Now, I'm not saying there aren't some situations that just it's valid. It wasn't really about that person. It was this other individual. But if it's constantly... Always everyone else's fault. Nah, (laughs) something's off somewhere. Something's off somewhere. And it's so important that we address and correct this because now if it does pour over from how he handles people to how he is with you, relationships cannot thrive unless people are willing to accept personal accountability. And yes, that's both sides, men and women, all right? Both sides have to be willing to accept constructive criticism and understand where they need to do better. And when one or more of those people involved, one or two, both of those people involved, aren't doing that, it's going to be a problem. It's going to create resentment. It's going to create a lot of frustration. It's going to create a greater level of disconnect. And it's not going to allow for there to be progress and growth to occur in the relationship. So it's one of those things we we have to address. And again, uh, for that guy addressing it, excuse me, 
will more than likely include, and that's really with any of these level issues of insecurity, is getting some counseling, is getting some healing, is being able to sit down with someone, excuse me, and, and really understand at the core what's going on with him. Why is he unable to look himself in the mirror, so to speak? But let me tell you something very important about trying to get someone to go to counseling, right? That you're in a, in a relationship or, or you're dating or whatever the case may be. No one likes to get singled out, all right? No one likes to be told, you're the problem, you got issues, you need to see a therapist, right? Especially because, again, in most cases, there are things on both sides that, that need to be corrected, okay? So if you want to encourage your partner, your man, the man that you're dealing with, to go get some counseling, you, you and I would tell, say this to the men as well, you want to kind of make it about both of you getting outside assistance, all right? And I'm not saying both of you have to do it together at the same time, as in doing dual sessions. I mean, like, all right, how about we both see somebody right now? You go to yours, I'll go to mine, and maybe eventually you guys can sit down and do some sessions together. But you're showing that, hey, I'm not making this just about you. I'm making it about us, right, and how we both can improve here. Or, or at the very least, if you're going to point this out, asking him, is there any issues you feel there is with me? Because if you ask him that and he, he just says, nah, baby, like, you're great. I, I, you know, I'm struggling in this area, but you're great. All right, then, then you don't necessarily have to go to counseling. But the fact that you at least allowed yourself or opened yourself up to his constructive criticism will make him feel more comfortable. That you're, just, you're not just making this all about him, all right? And if for some of you... He does says, well, by the way, yeah, you do have <laughs> this issue, right? Don't get defensive. Don't, don't shoot down what he's saying and be dismissive because why would he then be receptive to what you have to say in, in your suggestion for him to get additional assistance? It's, it's not going to make any sense. So you got to make sure you are open-minded enough and can receive that. So basically, if you want to dish it out, you got to be able to get, take it too, plain and simple. But yes, the, the whole you made me do it and not taking accountability, definitely a sign of some deep insecurity. All right. So now another phrase that uh, highly insecure men will use, and this isn't really a phrase, but it's what they'll do. And that is the silent treatment. All right. So unfortunately, there's a lot of men who struggle with communication, right? Or just blatantly don't want to communicate, right? Uh, and when I say blatantly, meaning they have no, they don't have, they, they're not well-intentioned in what they're doing. They're not serious about you and the relationship. Therefore, they don't care to learn how to better communicate and open themselves up. Whereas there are other men who simply struggle with it. They They do care about you. They do love you. But this is an area that they have not learned how to properly evolve and get better at, okay? And so what happens is you have a lot of men who tend to shut down. And the reason why this is a sign of insecurity for many men is because a lot of men do not feel confident in opening themselves up, being transparent, being vulnerable, because they fear you will look at them different, all right? Now, let's face it, though, let's be honest about this, that's a real situation for, that's happened to a lot of men. A lot of men have tried to open themselves up and lost the respect of their partner. Now, I am of the opinion, the belief, that it's not simply the act of opening up that created that issue. It's so much deeper than that. And I was just speaking to a group of men the other day, and I was explaining to them one of the things that contributes to that happening is, and I gave this example of, it's one thing for a man to get fired from his job, and then he's having a bad couple of days because he got fired, right? But then after a couple of days, he shakes it off, and he's back to trying to apply for jobs, you know, putting in the work keeping his head up, staying strong, finding ways to be productive versus the guy who loses, sulks for a couple of days, 
but then stays dwelling in that negative place, continues to whine, continues to hold his head down, you know, feeling sorry for himself, pity party, and then not applying himself. And we're talking weeks, maybe months, some situations, years, and he hasn't gotten himself together. And it's like you having that moment of sadness and hurt wasn't the problem. It's you letting it drag out that has lost this woman's respect because she's not seeing you be resilient and bounce back. She's not seeing you handle your business. You know what I'm saying? I think most people are reasonable enough to understand we all have a moment, but then you can't stay there, okay? And that's just one example of, I think, what men are not understanding about that type of a situation. However, because still so many are experiencing that and they don't have the confidence of, you can respect me for who I am, even if I tell you this thing or open up about this thing or be honest about whatever, they end up lying, either lying or shutting down. But in this example, silence, shutting down. And of course, it's a problem because all it does is create more issues. And, and you know, I always say secrecy creates insecurity. So now what started with maybe his own deeper insecurities and why he rather just shut down rather than speak about it, now turns into the woman's insecurities because she doesn't know what's going on with this man. Why is he acting different lately? Because you know, y'all pick up on everything. So you know he's acting different. You just don't know why. And unfortunately, so many women in that lack of clarity will create all kinds of scenarios in their head th that none of them may be correct, right? They, they could all be figments of her imagination, what she's assuming this is all about, but because she's left to now come up with her own conclusions, she comes up with negative ones because she's been through some stuff. So now she's thinking negatively rather than you know, giving him the benefit of the doubt, so to speak. And that creates a different set of issues. And, and then the whole thing just goes downhill. And so that's why it's never good. It's never healthy. And we have to establish early as possible in a relationship how we're going to handle things, all right? Like I even would say to men, excuse me, you know, if you are going to shut down, well, first give her a heads up. At least let her know, hey, you know what? I'm dealing with some stuff right now. I don't know how to talk about this at the moment or I'm not ready to talk about this at the moment. Give me a few days or whatever. Now, some of y'all may not even like that, but to me, at least he's being honest. He's being upfront. He's letting you know rather than just ghost and you'll know what's going on. Okay, and then coming back like nothing happened. No, no, we we gotta talk about this. We gotta understand what the deal is here. But that silence, that lack of communication, and again, sometimes that's just a man who is who's using silence to not have to address the issue because they don't have any good intention here, and so they don't want to have to deal with whatever deeper concerns you have. They just want to move things along and get what they need to get out of you. But then many others just struggle. And again, that's why I said almost everything on this list, if we're going to truly fix it, is going to, for many people, is going to have to require getting outside help, therapists, coaches, but at the very, or at the very least, there's two people coming together and laying out a plan of action on how we can improve in these areas. Now, before I wrap this video up, I just want to make one additional thing clear. Any kind of abusive language is unacceptable, all right? And we want to make sure, I have to say this, we want to make sure that we're not just setting the standard by addressing when they do it, but you're not engaging in it either. You're not the one also being abusive with your language, all right? I see too many relationships where sometimes uh, those bad habits are allowed early on and then they carry over and, and they get worse and then worse and it just gets very messy, all right? And so we want to be mindful of that. But again, even in even with language, I know that may sound crazy to some I'm about to say, but the first time it happens, it doesn't mean you just have to cut them off, kill it, address it. Because to me, if they're really about that uh, talking abusive and reckless and all these unhealthy things... They're not just going to own up and be like, okay, you know what? My bad. I'll, I'll fix that. They're probably going to say some other <laughs> uh, messed up things in that moment, right? 
but sometimes people come from unhealthy households and unhealthy past and they have to be it has to be brought to their attention that hey, we don't do that here. We we gotta speak to each other respectfully. And even when we say respectfully, laying out what respectfully is. You know what I'm saying? What is allowed, what's not allowed. Because different people have their different lines that they're willing to cross or not be crossed. So we wanna establish that and, and make sure we create an environment where we have healthy communication, all right? And we are willing to address any and all issues so that we can truly experience a healthy, amazing, successful relationship. Thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on seven boundaries you must set with men when dating. And again, unfortunately, a lot of people come from very unhealthy backgrounds and they don't understand what healthy communication is. And it's not that they don't 